Hello and welcome back to another tutorial. Today we're going to be covering trees, and we're going to split that into two parts, the blocks for the trees, and the items for the trees, and then the actual tree itself. So let's start with the blocks. The first thing that we're going to need to do is to create a custom sapling class. And to do that, in our common.block package, we're going to create another new class called custom sapling block. And this is going to extend sapling block. Then we're going to hover over this and add the constructor. And then we're just going to super null instead of tree in since we're going to create a custom spawner. So we can get rid of this. And we're going to override place tree or advanced tree on mod maps. And you can see over here what this function does. So we're just going to copy all of this into the other class. So if state.get, and then we need to pass in a property, which is stage. So if the stage of the sapling is zero, we're going to do world.setBlock state, or set block on mod maps. Then we're going to pass in the position and state.func23596a, or state.cycle on mod maps, and then stage. And then finally for the flag, we're going to pass in four, which is going to prevent the block from being re-rendered. So if the stage is zero, we're just going to cycle that stage. Otherwise, the tree is going to grow. So now we need to implement that logic. And to do that, we're going to need to create a custom spawner. So in our world package, let's create another new class called tree spawner. And we want to make sure that this class is abstract. And we're going to create an at nullable method, which is going to be a protected abstract feature of of i feature config. And then we're going to pass in get feature. And this is actually going to take a random, random, like so. Let's press Control Shift O to import random and nullable. And now we're going to do the exact same thing with the config. So at nullable protected abstract i feature config get config with the random, random passed in. Now all we need is a spawn method. So we're going to create a public boolean spawn, and this is going to take an i seed reader, called reader, chunk generator, generator, block pause, pause, and a random, random. And we're going to create a feature of i feature config called tree, and we're going to set it equal to get feature with random, we're going to check if tree is equal to null, and then we're just going to return false, so it won't have spawned. And if that isn't the case, we're going to do reader.setBlockState, or set block on modmap. Then we're going to pass in the pos, the state, so in this case, blocks.air.getDefaultState. And we're going to pass in four, so it doesn't re-render. And all that's going to do is set the block we're spawning at to air, so in this case this is going to be the sapling, and we're just going to set that to air. And on mod maps, this will be default block state. And we also need to pass in a block state called block under. And after we've done that, we're going to check if tree.generate, or on mod maps this will be tree.place, we're going to pass in the reader, generator, random, position, and now we need the config. And we're going to do the same thing that we did up here, so I feature config, config, is equal to get config with random. If config is equal to null, we're going to return false. And over here, we can just pass in config. And if that happens, we are going to just return true. And if that doesn't happen, we are going to do reader.setBlockState or set block on mod maps. We're going to pass in the pos, and we're going to pass in the block under and four. And all that's going to do is just replace the sapling back if it hasn't placed, and then we can return false because we haven't placed the tree. And there we go, that's our tree spawner class done. Now let's use this class in our sapling block. So up here we're going to pass in a tree spawner, spawner, and up here we're going to create a private final tree spawner tree. And we're going to set this dot tree to spawner, and then over here we're going to use that spawner with tree.spawn, and we can pass in the world, then world.getChunkProvider, or getChunkSource on mod maps, and then dot get chunk generator or on mod maps get generator. That's it for our custom sapling block class. 
And now let's create our blocks in Blockinit. So let's create a public static final registry object of block. And this is going to be called example log. And we're going to set this equal to blocks.register of example log. And then we need to create our block. So let's create a new rotated pillar block. And then we need to pass in custom properties. And then let's put abstract block dot properties dot create or dot of on mod maps. And then we can pass in material dot wood and then dot sound sound type dot wood dot hardness and resistance or dot strength on mod maps. And we're going to set this to 2F and 10F. Then we can set the harvest level to zero and the tool type or harvest tool to tool type dot axe. And we can make sure that this is a supplier of rotated pillar block. Now we can do the exact same thing for the example stripped log and make sure to change it here as well. And this is going to have a blast resistance of three instead of 10. Then we're going to create our leaves. So public static final registry object of block example leaves is equal to blocks dot register example underscore leaves and then we pass in a supplier of new leaves block and once again let's do abstract block dot properties dot create or dot of on mod maps and then we can pass in material dot leaves a sound type of plant or grass on mod maps and then we're going to set the hardness and resistance or strength on mod maps to 0.2f and 1f Finally, let's make it tick randomly and give it not solid. And on mod maps, this is random ticks and no occlusion. And this is just going to make our leaves be able to despawn. Now we can copy all of this and paste it for our sapling. Let's change the example leaves to our example sapling and the same thing over here. Instead of the leaves block, let's set it to our custom sapling block. Then let's hover over this and add an argument. For now, this is just going to be null. And all we're going to do is change this to 0f. And now we need to make the leaves and saplings transparent so they don't look weird in the world. And to do that, we're going to go to our client event bus subscriber. And over here, we're going to type render type lookup dot set render layer block in it dot example leaves dot get and render type dot cutout and we're going to do the exact same thing for our example sapling now we need to do some JSONs so let's go into our assets and create our block states so we'll start with the logs so let's create an example log dot JSON block state and we can just copy the example block and replace the block with the log however we're going to need to make a few changes and to make those changes, we're going to need different axes. So let's start with axes is equal to X. And if it's X, then we need to rotate the X by 90 and the Y by 90 as well. Then if the axis is Z, we want to select the same model, but this time only rotate at 90 degrees on the X. And finally, if the axis is Y, then we don't need to rotate it at all. And that's actually it. Now we can copy this file and paste it again. And we're going to name it example stripped log. And then all we have to do is replace the example with example stripped log over here, here, and here. And to make the leaves and saplings block states, they're just going to be the same as example blocks. So let's change this to example leaves and example sapling and replace everything accordingly inside the file. So example leaves and example sapling. And after we've done this, we can move on to the lang file. So under our blocks, we're going to copy and paste this a couple of times. This is going to be example log, example stripped log, example leaves, and example sapling. And we're going to change their names accordingly, like so. Next, let's create the block models. So for the log, let's copy and paste the example block and change it to example log. And for the parent, we're going to select block slash cube column, like so. And instead of textures all, we're going to need two different textures. And we'll have an end texture, which is going to be tutorial mod colon block slash example log top. And we're going to have a side texture, which isn't going to be the top one, it's going to be the sides, so we can just leave it like this. And that's our example log model. Now let's copy and paste this for the example stripped log and change the name inside accordingly. Next for the leaves, we can copy and paste example block, change the name, and then inside we can change the block to leaves. 
And then for the sapling, we're going to once again need a slightly different model. So let's copy and paste example block and change it to example sapling. And instead of cube all, we're going to need to use block slash cross. And then for the cross texture, we're going to use tutorial mod blocks example sapling. And then we're just going to need a, another texture. And this is going to be the same texture and we're just going to use that for the particle. And there we go, that's all of our block models done. Now let's move on to the item models. So for the log, stripped log, and leaves, we're just going to use the exact same item model, which is just the default item model for any block. So let's do that. Let's copy and paste our example block, change the name to example log, and change the parent to example log as well. Then we're going to take that, copy and paste it, change it to example stripped log, and change it inside the file as well. Copy and paste it once again for example leaves, and inside of there change the name to example leaves. And then we need to create a slightly different model for the sapling. So let's just copy our example item item model, and change it to example sapling. And in here we're going to change the texture to tutorial mod colon blocks slash example sapling. So we're just going to use the block texture, but instead of creating a cross, we're just going to use the main texture, just like a flower or any other vanilla sapling. And the last thing that we need to do before we create the feature is make our log be strippable. So to do that in our core util, we're going to create another new class called stripping map. And in here, we're going to create a public static void called create strippable. And we're going to pass in a block input and a block output, like so. Let's press Control shift o to import block from net.minecraft.block.block. And in here we're going to type axeitem.blockstrippingmap, which is something that we've created in our access transformer, which you'll need to watch the last episode to be able to access this variable. And we're going to set it equal to maps.newhashmap. And this is going to take another map where we're going to pass in axe item dot block stripping map. And on mod maps, this will be called strippables. Underneath that, we're going to create another public static void called register strippables. And all we're going to do is in here is to actually register these. So let's just create a strippable of block init dot example log dot get and block init dot example stripped log dot get. And if you want to add more strippables, you can just add more lines like this. And now we need to recall this register strippables map in our main class. So over in there, we're going to create a new method. And underneath here, we're going to create a public void on load complete. And this is going to take a final FML load complete event. And we can call this event. And all we're going to do here is to call stripping map dot register strippables. And now we need to register this on complete method and we can do that up here. So under common setup, let's do bus dot add listener and then we can pass in this colon colon on load complete. And now we're ready to put the textures into our textures package. And I'm just going to use the acacia textures since I can't be bothered to make my own. So all I'm going to do now is rename them to the correct things. And you can see that the textures in default Minecraft are actually just white, but this is not going to be the case for our leaves because we're not coloring them. So you need to make this texture green or whatever color you want your leaves to be. And we can paste them into Eclipse. Now let's launch the game. And while we wait for the game to load, here's a short message from our sponsor. This video is sponsored by MTX Serve. MTX Serve provides premium game servers for titles such as Minecraft, Rust, and Valheim. Click the link in the description and use code CY4 to get 5% off your server today. And you can see that when we load into our game, we have our example log, example stripped log, example leaves, and example sapling. And you can see that all of these can be oriented and have the correct models when placed. The leaves are transparent and the sapling can't actually be placed on the floor, so we can place it on dirt like so. But there's a couple of things that will change. This won't be able to grow, and the logs will cause the leaves to despawn because the game doesn't actually know that the leaves can't despawn when near this log. And we've actually never added our item to our stripping map, so we can do that really quickly right now. Let's do axe item dot block stripping map dot put input and output like so. And to make some of the behavior function correctly, we're going to need some tags. So in data.tutorialmod, let's create a new class, 
and instead this is going to be data dot minecraft because we're adding to minecraft tags dot tags dot blocks and in here we're going to create a new file called logs dot json and you want to make sure that all of this is named correctly and in here we're going to set replace to false since we don't want to replace the vanilla logs and then let's set the values to an array and in here we can just pass in our logs so let's do tutorial mod colon example log as our custom log and if you want to add more you can just add a comma and then add more lines over here and our strippable log isn't a log because leaves will despawn if it's next to them. Next we'll need a couple more tags, so let's do leaves.json and we're just going to put custom leaves. Then we're going to put logs that burn and in here we're just going to leave this as example log because our log will be able to burn. And finally we'll want one for saplings and in here we'll pass in our example sapling as a sapling. And when we load up the game you can see that we can strip these logs and our leaves actually won't despawn when generated. Now we can finally start creating the tree feature itself so that our tree spawns in this dimension. So let's go into our world.feature package and create a new class and this is going to be our example tree feature. And just like our other feature we're going to extend feature of no feature config since this is actually going to be very similar. So let's add our constructor and just super of codec and add our generate method which in mod maps is going to be place and what we're going to do is copy our is air all leaves function and paste it up here and then go over here and copy this is air all leaves so that we always end up on the surface of our world because that's where we want to generate the tree and we actually want to remove this pos is pos dot up so that we end up on the bottom of the world and the position is the actual surface block not the air above it and we, we, what we want to check if you want your tree to only be able to spawn on the grass we're going to check that if it's a grass so we can do if exclamation mark is dirt at or on mod map is grass or dirt then we're going to pass in the reader and the position so if it isn't the dirt we can return false however i'm not going to do this since my dimension doesn't have any dirt so this actually won't do anything and if you want to use a custom dirt you need to make sure to add it to the tags over here so i'm actually going to remove this okay so let's split our tree into many stages because now we actually need to generate it so let's first generate the trunk and then generate the leaves. And in order to determine the trunk, we're first going to need the height. So let's set the int height. And the way I'm gonna get the height is by having a minimum and maximum value. So my tree is going to have a minimum height of four and a maximum height of seven. And the way we're going to do that is by having four, which is the minimum height, plus rand.next int of four. And what this function will do is give us a random number between zero and three. So zero, one, two or three and add it to four. So the heights we can get are four, five, six or seven. And then we're going to loop over the height and keep adding to our trunk. And we're going to check if pos.getY is bigger than or equal to one, so we're not under the world, and pos.getY plus the maximum height, which is in this case seven, plus however much we're going to need for the leaves. So let's say I only have a maximum of one block above the trunk, so plus one, is less than reader.getHeight, or on mod maps, get max build height. And if that is the case, so if our tree can actually generate at this height, we're going to loop over our trunk and place blocks there. So we're going to loop over int i is equal to pos.getY plus one, because we don't want to spawn our tree in the ground. And we're going to loop over this while i is less than position.getY plus height plus one, because once again, we don't want it to generate on the ground. And then we're going to add one to i each time. i is going to be the correct height at which we need to place the trunk. So all we have to do is reader.setBlock state or set block on mod maps. Then we pass in the position, so we'll have a new block pos of pos.getx, i, and pos.getz. Then we need to pass in the block states that we want to set it to, which is going to be the trunk, and then the flags. And for our flags, we're going to use three. Now let's get our block state. So at the top, we're going to have our private static final block state of log, and this is going to be equal to block init.example log 
dot get dot get default state or on Marshall apps this would be default block state and then we're going to do the exact same thing for the leaves and now we can use our log over here to set this to our log block and there we go now we're generating our trunk now comes the hard part the leaves and this is obviously going to vary depending on what your tree looks like and this is generally quite a difficult thing but it should be quite easy now that you know that you're you have your block state and how to set the position. So what I'm going to do is to first of all set a block at the top. So we're going to do reader.set block state of pos and we're going to set it to leaves and the int is going to be three. And the position that we're going to set it at is a new block state of pos.get x, pos.get y and height plus two. So that's going to place a leaf block at the very top and we want to make sure that this is block pause and not block state and then what I'm going to do is loop through each direction so for direction and we want to make sure to use the net.minecraft.util one we're going to call this d and this is going to be in directions and this is something that we haven't created yet so at the top let's create a private static final direction array directions and this is going to be equal to a new directions array of of direction dot north direction dot east direction dot south and direction dot west just like so and now this direction is just going to loop through each one of these values and that is how we loop through different directions another thing we can do is loop through heights so let's do int i is equal to and we set it to the top block of the trunk. So that is going to be pos.getY plus height plus one. So that's the very top block of the trunk. And what we want to do is to say while I is bigger than pos.getY plus one, we're going to take away from I. So this is going to go down the trunk and i is going to be the height and we can actually just remove this pos.y and add it on later at a new block pos which we're going to create later and then set this to our leaves with a flag of three and the block pos is going to be pos.getx then we're going to have pos.gety plus i and then pos.getz and now we're looping down the trunk and just setting it to our leaves but obviously we don't want it to go to any random direction because this will just replace our trunk so let's take this full loop that we made back here and place it around this reader.set block state. And now we're going to do this four times, once for each direction, and each one we're going to do dot offset. And in mod maps, this is going to be relative, and we pass in the direction D and the amount we're going to offset. So in this case, it's going to be I. That's going to create a very weird shape for the leaves, but we can fix that quite quickly. First of all, we can swap this, so it sets i to equal to one, and while it's going to be less than height plus one, we're going to add to i. So now we're going to go from one to the height plus one for i, and then here we can subtract i from the pos plus height. So let's say the pos that we generate is zero, and we're going to start at one, and we're going to take that plus the height and we can set this to zero as well so this is just going to loop over the height and that way we can start from the top block and loop down and offset it once into each direction now let's impose a limit onto this and say we only want to do it for the top four blocks this time instead of height we can do four just like so i'm actually going to change this to three because some of the trees are at least four tall and once we've done that, we can return true over here to make sure that it has generated. And this is probably going to make a very weird shape, but you can mess around with this until you get something that looks good. So now let's register this feature. Let's go into our feature in it and let's copy this registry object, paste it over here, change this to our example tree feature, change this from example feature to example tree and the same thing over here to example tree. Let's copy and paste this over here. Press Control Shift O to import. And now we've registered our feature. Now let's actually register the tree with a custom tree spawner. 
So in our init class, let's create another new class called tree init. And in here, we're going to create a public static final tree spawner, which is a class that we made earlier. And we're going to call this example because it's our example tree. And we're going to set it to a new tree spawner. And this is going to auto generate some functions for us to fill in. So the feature and the config. For the feature, we can return feature init dot example feature dot example tree dot get and this is going to throw an error and in order to fix that over in our tree spawner we're going to get rid of this i feature config and this config at all and in here we're going to pass in a new no feature config since all of our trees are going to have no config then we can add at suppress warnings over here then we can add raw types like that which will remove the warnings on this and then over here we can add suppress warnings unchecked and we can also remove the get config now in our tree init we can remove this and return feature init dot example tree dot get and we can also remove this and add suppress warnings raw type to this class as well and now we've got our tree spawner we can go into our block init class and over here we can add tree init dot example and now we're passing in our tree to our sapling now all we need to do is add the feature to our biome so in our data world type feature we're going to copy all of this and rename it to our example tree and we went over this in the last episode but this defines how it's generated i'm going to make it a little rarer so i'm going to change the count to two and i'm going to change this example feature to example tree now let's add this to our biome and this goes in just after our example feature with tutorial mod colon example tree and there we go and we don't actually need this line since it's going to generate on the top of the tree anyway and if it's not in the correct position we need to make sure to return false over here and in our feature class you want to make sure to add dot width or dot set value on mod maps and then add leaves block dot distance and set it to one to make sure that our leaves don't despawn. And if we run the game, you can see that all of our trees have generated very nicely. If we place a example sapling and grow it with bone mill, you can see that our example tree spawns and that we can take an ax and then strip these blocks like so. Also, if we place our leaves down and do game rule random tick speed and set it to something very high, you can see that they won't despawn and same with the ones on the trees but if we remove the log you can see that the trees will then despawn and if you don't want these ones on the side to despawn you can increase the distance and set it to something like two that's going to do it for this episode if you need any help join the discord and you can also join a free modded minecraft server that anyone can play on thank you once again to mtx serve for sponsoring this video and I'll see you next time. This is the strangest biome.